So through the past few months there have been multiple occasions where I had to work on underwater scenes in Cinema 4D. A bit different than the usual stuff, because how do you make something look like it's deep on the ocean floor? Well, let's check it out. For this tutorial I'm using Cinema 4D R26 combined with Octane Render, but any older version of Cinema 4D should work as well. Let's start off by creating a landscape that will be our ocean floor. I prefer working on a 1 to 1 scale lately, so let's make this large enough. We can also add more segments to it, so we get more detail out of it. You can adjust the sliders to your own preference, but I think we should keep it somewhat subtle. And to get a more dramatic effect, you can also disable the borders at sea level, uh, but again, that's up to you what you need for your project. I'm gonna run through some different seats to find a nice one, and I'll stick with this for now, because it has a good flatter piece here where we can put the camera view. Just something optional I'm going to add, but which makes it more clear to see the final effect, are some objects. In this case I pick some crashed parts from the International Space Station. Something like this looks good to me, so I'm gonna log in the view uh, by creating an Octane camera already. Usually I would continue by adding the textures on the landscape now, but the way it looks depends a lot on the environment around it, so let's create it first. So I'm starting with a texture environment. I got my icon set up here at the side, but you will have to go to the top menus here of the Octane Live Viewer. And we're going to use the path tracing mode for this, but direct lighting also gives good results, uh, it's up to you. Set the color to something dark and blue, but you probably don't want it to be too saturated. Now create an octane area light, go in the details of the object, not the tag, and set the shape to disk. It will kind of help you with making things look more natural in the end, because we don't have rectangular lights in the ocean. Raise up the light and make sure it points down. Make sure it's out of the view, that's really important for all the lights in this tutorial. I am opening the details tab for you guys, so you can see how large I'll scale this light. So this looks good to me. Go into the Octane Light settings, so we can add an RGB spectrum node in the texture field. This way we can add a specific color to the light, which is more of a cyan blue in this case. Also optionally you can add a noise shader in the distribution field. It doesn't do that much here, but it breaks up the hardness of the light a little. Now find a spot to put the light that looks nice for your specific scene. And you can also make a duplicate of course, uh, so you can light more of the parts in the background too. But I recommend decreasing the strength of it a bit, so we still have the center of attention at the front. Alright, so that's pretty basic stuff so far. Now we can start with the fake caustics or light streaks you get underwater. There are multiple and probably even more realistic ways to do this. But as you know, I like faking things, so we have more control over it. Alright, you can duplicate one of the lights we just created, and it can be rather small, so we can have more of a sharper light. It needs some compensation in the strength because of that, and you also need to disable surface brightness so the strength gets unlinked from the size. Let's put it somewhere away from the other ones, so we can actually see what it does. And while having the light selected and holding control on the keyboard, you can create a cylinder object that pops up at the same location. Set the orientation so it points down, and also make it smaller, just so it becomes like a small tube around the light. Also disable the caps so the light can pass through it of course. We can now have that cylinder still selected and create a cloner while holding Alt on the keyboard. That makes the cylinder a child of the cloner straight away. Use this in the grid mode, maybe 3 clones to each side, but not stacked on top of each other. A step size of 50 cm or something works in this case, just so they are stacked right next to each other. The next step is a bit optional, but worth it if you are planning on making an animation instead of a still image. So with the cloner selected, create a shader effector, and in the shader tab, add a noise, uh, make it smaller, like 25% or something, and add a 0.2 animation speed to it. In my opinion that will be like a nice tranquil motion of the sea surface. Now in the parameter tab you can set up how it affects the cloner. We don't need it to scale, maybe we can change the position a bit, but we are mainly focusing on the rotation. It doesn't have to be anything specific, 
but don't make it too strong. The tubes still have to somewhat point downwards. What I did was selecting the cloner again and creating another shader effector, but with twice as large of a noise in it and slightly different rotation values. This just gives a bit more variation to it all, but it is not a big must. Okay, with that set up, make sure the cloner floats a little below the light, so all cylinders get a bit of that light spilling in. And I'm making the cloner a child of the light, so it's a bit easier to move this all around together. Now, what you may notice straight away are these white pixels appearing, which they call fireflies. This does happen with very strong lights, but there's not that much that helps if you're just tweaking the light settings in this case. Instead, you will have to go to the Octane Render settings and decrease the GI clamp value a lot. It's really up high by default, but you want to put it all the way to 1 or something, or 10 can also work. We've made it this far, but except for things looking blue, it doesn't look underwater yet. The big missing part here is some kind of fog. You could use fog in the environment we created earlier on, but that gets heavier than needed because it calculates all the way in the distance, so let's just use a fog volume instead. Make sure to save your file first maybe, because this can be unstable on weaker GPUs. I also always go straight to the generate tab and increase the voxel size a lot before scaling the volume. It just tells the volume not to calculate thousands of small voxels while we are scaling the volume to a huge size. So what is important here is to make it large enough so it covers your whole view, including the floor, but especially all the lights and also the camera. You'll probably not notice anything happening because we still have the voxel size at this huge value, so gently decrease that or you should be safe in the 100 centimeter zone or something. Just don't go to 1 centimeter straight away. We also obviously need to hide it in our viewport with the radio button here. And for me it looks like we didn't fully cover the camera, so I'm going to adjust that. It's really dark right now, which is pretty realistic if you're in the abyss, but we want something to look at of course. So go in the medium tab of your volume and open the volume medium shader. Lower the density until you see some color again. And I like increasing the volume step length to compensate it further. It takes away a bit of the detail, but it gets a lot faster to render. Also in this case we are not working with detailed clouds that could lose the detail, but we're working with solid fog, so we should be good. So now you can finally start seeing the light leaking from the top and casting like a spot on the ground, which is nice. But for the strongest result you want to have your lights just out of the view. We can push the look further with the volume, so let's go back in there and change the absorption color to something teal looking and the scattering more in the direction of something green and bright. You can also try out the scattering phase, which mostly changes the strength of the light leaking at the top, but you probably want to stay somewhere in the middle. To boost the look even further without using After Effects or Photoshop straight away, um, we can also add a post-processing in the Octane camera. Adding a lot of bloom and glare is justified here in my opinion, because it gives more of that cloudy water look to it. Something else you can do here in the camera imager or in post is tweaking some values like the exposure and the gamma. Adding a strong vignette also makes it appear like you're deeper in the ocean. And personally I also like adding a built-in LUT here already. It just makes things look more dramatic straight away, but that's just a matter of taste so you can use anything. Maybe it does make things look a bit too blue here, so you can also change your Octane environment color to something more dull. What I did at this point was trying some different light locations, also changing the scale of the fake caustics and their cylinders. I don't think there is a right or wrong thing to do, just experiment. But in the end, at least for me, keeping the amount of lights to a minimum gave me the best results. Another thing you can also do is just picking one of these cylinders with the light inside of it and use it as a very specific spot. A quick trick I also applied to it is making a duplicate of that light and moving it a bit under the other one, then drastically increasing the strength so we get more of a spotlight effect, but this also overexposes the floor so we can compensate that by disabling the visible on diffuse and specular options down here. Great, so now we've got all that out of the way, we can start focusing on the landscape again. You could just slap on any texture you think fits, 
but I like blending two materials to break it up a little. Again, there are many ways to do this, but I will stick with just a simple method, which is using two different landscapes. A first glossy material will be one for the rocky material. Duplicate our landscape maybe, uh, but hide the second one for now, so we can just focus on this first one. The texture I'm using for this can be found on Quixel for free. You can use Quixel Bridge or just download it through their website like this, but make sure you go in their settings and select the right ones. So now it's just a matter of connecting these as image texture nodes respectively. For the displacement they provided an EXR, which is a lot better than the PNGs or JPEGs you can find for displacements. It just contains more detail. Make sure the resolution is also high enough, and same for the height, make it high enough. And I like setting the mid-level somewhere in the middle so we can blend it more easily later on. We don't want to be at any extremes. Let's take a closer look. So this looks alright, but a bit large compared to the space station. So we can change that in the material tag here. I think a scale of 10% seems right for me. I'm disabling the volume for a minute so it's easier to see for you. Because I found one specific issue with this texture. There is a canyon shaped glitch right here. Originally this texture was made by RD textures and it was totally fine, but since they merged with Quixel it has this bright spot on the left and the right. So I put it in Photoshop and depending on what plugins you have it may look grey or red, but it works both ways. I duplicated the layer and I just picked a color somewhere close to the overexposed part and just using a soft brush I ran over it and then saved it as a PSD again, which we can import in Cinema 4D again. Alright, so it looks a bit dark right now, but we will fix that once we got our main material set up, which is the sand. So I'm going to use the diffuse material for this. Again, you can use any material, but I found a nice one that have these kind of dune shapes on it already. So we can add these few images again, again with a similar displacement at mid-level settings. And of course we need to put it on the second landscape. And this one can be somewhere around 3% of scale maybe. We can adjust that later. Okay, now you can start fine-tuning the displacement in its height and mid-levels again, just so it kind of blends together. Maybe 6% of the scale of the material is actually better, so it doesn't look that small. And we're trying to find a nice middle ground of the height. To blend it more, I went into the nodes of the sand material and added a mix node then adding a displacement map of the other texture to this one as well, so we can blend both of the displacement maps into one mix node and then put that in the displacement. But of course if you do it like that it doesn't work, you need to put in a baking texture in between there, which is kind of annoying, but it just works like that. Also make sure you give it a higher resolution in there than just the default. But be aware, whenever you're changing anything under this node, it will take a while to calculate the baking process. Now obviously these patches are very dark and maybe in some way this could be an interesting look, but let's change it so it blends more. For this you can go back in the first material, so the rocks, and add a color correction node on the image texture. It really depends on your chosen texture, but using the gain exposure and contrast sliders will do most of the work. Also lowering the saturation and moving the U to a bit more of a pink color can also help with matching it more with the sand color. Again you can fine tune some lights and stuff, but we are almost there. What I did as a last step is adding an octane scatter object with not weeds from the 3D Quakers plugin. Uh, looks good enough in my opinion, although it's not seaweed. But you can also try finding some real seaweeds of course. I assigned the scatter to the landscape of course, in surface mode instead of vertex. And with this position dial you can also make sure it pops out just above the sand, because we have a displacement on the surface. And in the scale dropdown I also made it a bit less tall, so we can see over it more easily. And I also added a noise shader in here, to get more diversity in the scale and its distribution. So these were the steps involved in creating an underwater scene in Octane. Please let us know if this format is too long or detailed, or if you actually liked it this way. Anyway, I hope you learned something new today, and I will catch you in the next one.